All right, good afternoon, everyone. Um, we would like to welcome you to our uh, fall 2020 higher and post-secondary education applied project poster session. Um, thank you all for being here. Um, well, first, we'd like to, of course, welcome our, our, our presenters um, and our graduate students who will be sharing um, with you all shortly about some of the work that they've done over the last uh, 15 weeks, although in many cases for many of our students, this represents um, a longer engagement with the topic, whether it's through their own professional careers or through practicum experiences. Um, but what this culminating um, project will give you an opportunity to do is to learn a little bit more about um, the things that they've been able to research and gather data on and share findings related to uh, critical and timely issues within higher and post-secondary education um, context. Um, I should, should have start by saying my name is uh, Kia McGuire. I'm an associate professor in the higher and post-secondary education program. My gender pronouns are he, him, and his. Um, and I would also like to acknowledge the ancestral homelands of the Akami, Atham and Pipash people's lands, which we all are working from and learning on. Um, and so I would like to start by simply sharing a little bit about the program and more importantly, where this project fits within that um and the, within students learning experiences and then i'll turn it over to my colleague uh, dr mcintyre who will share a little bit more about the floor of the events um, for today um so um again our higher and post-secondary education program um, is is an opportunity um, and a learning experience that's really geared to prepare uh, professionals to work in a variety of contexts on college and university campuses um, one of the things that is uh, has become a core identity of our program um, has been the process by which we uh, help um, and work alongside students as they learn uh, uh, ways to gather data, um, analyze data, um, all in the service of improving um, um, higher education practice and policy uh, wherever they may be located. Um, and so this applied inquiry or applied project uh, that poster session that you see here today is a, is a culmination of a 15 week um, exercise or experience during the first seven and a half weeks, our students have an opportunity to design a project. Um, of course, these projects are um, oftentimes very ambitious. And over our 15 weeks, we are able to pare it down um, into something that is not only manageable, but that will be impactful with the data that they're able to gather. And then in this uh, session B of the semester, uh, students are able to uh, carry out and, um, their research project. Um, and we'll get a little bit towards this at the end of the, the uh, um, session today when we give some thank yous, but you should know it's, this represents not only the work of our students and the faculty who are in the classroom, but also um, a number of mentors who sign up to um, work with students along and, and help give feedback on their projects as they're being designed and carried out. Um, so we look forward to you all engaging with our um, students today, um, asking them questions, learning about uh, their research, um, and hopefully having a very um, invigorating conversation. So at this point, I'll turn it over to Dr. McIntyre, who will say a little bit more about how the rest of the afternoon will be spent. Thank you. Hi there. My name is Lisa McIntyre. I am an executive director in the university provost office at ASU and teach um, in the master in higher ed program. Um, the applied project is one of my favorite classes um, because as Dr. McGuire said, this is about the topics that the students are most interested in. And so I always learn a lot um, about topics that I maybe don't get exposure to on a regular basis. So I hope um, all our guests um, have that same experience. Um, our students will be presenting um, in small breakout rooms of three to four folks. Um, Dr. McGuire is gonna put a link um, in the chat where you can find the Zoom breakout room link for the individual that you're here to support um, or the breakout room that you're most interested in. Um, they are grouped uh, by topics. Um, we ask that you mute your um, microphones. You're all doing a great job of that if you're not the one presenting. Um, we will present in order of the link that um, Dr. McGuire just shared. There will be a facilitator in the room to just kind of make sure all the technical uh, pieces go right. They will be recorded sessions. We also ask that you hold all your questions until all of the presentations in your breakout room are complete. Um, and then we'll open up that session for questions. We do encourage you to ask questions. Um, these folks are experts on this topic um, and have spent a lot of time and energy 
um, becoming experts. And so um, this is a great opportunity for them to, to answer any questions that you might have. Once all the presentations in your breakout room are complete, we ask you to come back to this main session room um, for us to wrap up the program. So with that, um, Dr. McGuire, anything I missed or you want to add before we break out? Nope, oh, that, that's it. And please reach out to us um, for um, any questions that you might have. Dr. McIntyre and I will be, will be moving from room to room. I see that I just got a message in the chat asking, can, you, can individuals move from room to room? Uh, yes, as long as you're not a presenter. So all of our, our guests beyond the students are able to, um, again, move um, as you would like to bounce around to hear different topics um, of conversation and discussion. Um, and so again, at this time, we'll give folks about you know five to seven minutes to make your way over to your rooms. Um, for, for our students who are on the call, again, look at the sheet as well so that you can go to the room that you will be in. Um, and yeah, I think that's it for now. So thank you and welcome all again. Hello everyone, my name is Nkiru Wachuku. I will be sharing my research with you today, which is an examination of Holster alumni student persistence. For an agenda, I will discuss the research problem, then I will discuss the purpose of this study and the research question that I was looking to answer. Next, I will go over the methodology I will discuss the findings of the study, and lastly, I will discuss the implications. So I originally became interested in this topic because my sister is a foster care parent, and the children that I've gotten to know, I started to think, what are their future educational opportunities? So just a little bit of a background. Uh, roughly 20% of foster youth are age out of the foster care system each year. 70% aspire to go to college. However, only 2 to 11% of foster youth actually obtain a bachelor's degree, which led me to my research problem that foster youth are significantly less likely to pursue a college education and obtain a bachelor's degree. For this study, I wanted to focus on foster alumni in higher education or who have completed a degree, a degree and from the perspective of professionals that work with this student demographic in order to get a better understanding of the foster alumni student population. Uh, my final research question was what intrinsic and extrinsic motivators influence foster alumni students to persist in college. From a review on literature on student persistence and retention, I identified three constructs that were important for understanding student persistence and the following three constructs. So student engagement, community and transition and coping which uh, they were all used for the theoretical underpinnings for this study. I used a qualitative research design as it allowed me to obtain rich data about foster alumni students, but from an outsider perspective. I conducted one-on-one -on -one semi-structured interviews with each participant via Zoom. All of the participants worked with foster alumni students in some kind of capacity. For example, a coordinator for university foster youth program, um, a coordinator for community college foster youth program, um, an educational specialist with the Department of Child and Safety, and an advisor for a nonprofit that um, was contracted with DCS. The interviews range from 25 to 30 minutes. All participants were asked the same predetermined questions, which, can, which consisted of two to three questions from each construct, and then three general questions such as like, what is their role and how they work with foster alumni students. 
To analyze the data, I first transcribed all of the in interviews using uh, the transcribe function in Microsoft Word. Uh, then I used an open coding technique where I chunked any data that was similar. From there, I used an axial coding technique and clustered the preliminary codes that I identified to list them into uh, themes. So there were four themes that emerged from the participants' interviews, um, having a support network, having a sense of advocacy, commitment to family, and the structure of higher education systems. The themes that emerged were not exclusive to one construct. So the first theme that emerged was um, having a support network. This theme emerged when participants were asked questions related to student engagement. Participants uh, talked about support networks as in like peers, such as if they had like peer mentors. Um, so like other students that had similar backgrounds, but they also mentioned support networks as like adults in foster alumni students' lives. So that could be an adult within the higher education system or outside of the higher education system that, uh, those students were able to go to to ask questions. So I had a couple of uh, quotes here from the interviews. The first one is, if it's not the academic pathway that is engaging them, some of them are engaged in like our cultural centers and our resource centers, stuff that they're very, very personally connected to. Another quote that I have is, so behavior that I've seen that, I've, that have helped students be success, successful is like asking for help figuring out who their person was and going back to them, reaching out to their network. The next theme was having a sense of advocacy. This theme also emerged when participants were asked um, questions related to student engagement, but it also emerged within the construct of transition and coping. This could be advocacy for themselves, other students um, within like their program, or it could have also been uh, siblings as well. Um, here was a really, a really great quote from a participant that shared the journey of one of her previous students. Uh, she said that particular student in particular, she was often tapped to speak at conferences. She was part of Foster Club and was able to do an internship with them. And so again, I think that her involvement in these different activities really kept her grounded in like where she came from, uh, what she has been through, how her experiences and her success could be turned into something that helped others. And so she actually went on to earn her master's in social work and actually works as a child welfare worker now. Another theme that emerged was commitment to family. This emerged when participants were asked questions about community and family. Participants talked about how for foster alumni students, community and family were almost one in the same. It is very much what they make of it. Uh, participants also talked about how they've seen foster alumni students have a strong sense of community to siblings, whether that was older siblings or younger siblings, and whether that uh, was helpful for them or toxic. I included this really powerful quote from a participant that was sharing the experience of a junior in college having to potty train their three-year-old younger brother. Uh, the participant says, I think DCS preys on this a little bit, if I'm going to be honest, because they want to lower the number of kids in care. And so they push hard on all those siblings to be like, well, you don't want your siblings to be in foster care. You had such a horrible experience. The last thing that emerged was the structure of the higher education system. All participants mentioned um, something about the higher education system. So participants talked about challenges that they have seen foster alumni students have with like the financial aid verification process, residency classification, and policies around uh, housing. And uh, I've also listed a quote here talking about like students not having their birth certificate or social security uh, cards, which would be like needed for some of the pro these processes. So the implications, so although this study aimed to answer what motivators influence foster alumni students to persist in college, it brought out three main implications. One, it spotlighted the complexities of processes in higher education that impact foster alumni students. 
So further research on foster alumni students and the impact of higher education systems can help inform policies to maybe better streamline this process. Uh, the study also highlighted how the processes in higher education are designed for maybe the traditional student. This study can begin to inform future research on how higher education processes could be excluding other underrepresented student populations. And, and lastly, the study called attention to the lack of knowledge higher education professionals generally have about the foster alumni student demographic. As a higher education professional, you may not know you've had an encounter with a foster alumni student. So further research can inform higher ed policy for training all higher education professionals to be more inclusive and mindful of the foster alumni student population. Well, that is all that I have today. I thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> so um, thank you for that, Jordan. Um, so I have to say this is my first time participating in a, a virtual uh, poster session. And um, that felt like a whirlwind, but in a good way. Um, so thank you all for your presentations. Uh, both Dr. McIntyre and I had an opportunity to hop around from room to room. Um, I'm actually going to stop talking and turn over to Dr. McIntyre, and I'll say a little bit more to, to close us out at the end. All right, I just wanted to congratulate all of you. You should be very proud of what you did. Um, I know this semester was like none other. Um, just like Dr. McGuire, that was my first um, virtual poster session. Um, and I just wanna commend you all on your resilience and determination um, in making it work. We had all kinds of fun challenges to work through um, and we all did it and had great communication and I think um, you you all just the potential is is limitless for all of you so i wish you all the best of luck um i hope to hear updates from you all where your careers take you and um I'm always here as a resource for for you all so um i see all the applause and uh celebrations going up um it might be a bit much to unmute and do a round of applause but um uh want to thank all the guests um family members who were able to join us today. Um, that is one of the great things about our virtual um, opportunity is that I think we might have been able to expand our, our audience a bit more. Um, we will be sharing recordings with the students. So if you weren't able to have a guest join us today, um, please share it with them. Um, there's no way any of us would have made it through this program without all the support of our family and friends. Um, and I also want to thank our colleagues. Um, so every student in the in this part of the project has access to a professional mentor who's met with them multiple times throughout the semester and giving them feedback and encouragement. And so um, thank you all for for doing that for our students. It really um, was great to see the the feedback and insights and having that other perspective to bounce ideas around was really helpful and benefited the work. So. Um, all right, well, I'll stop gushing. Uh, Dr. McGuire, <laughs> what did you have? Yeah, so just one more um, uh, thank you before we move on, which is to Jody um, and her team um, who have handled all the logistical um, um, responsibilities for today is setting up the virtual rooms, making sure that all the Zoom leaks work and making sure that we have facilitators in each room. So thank you to Jody, uh, Ashley, Pinnock, Liam, Liam, Caitlin, uh, for your support um, and making sure that this program went off uh, without any hiccups. So, so thank you all very much uh, for making this easy for Dr. McIntyre and myself. Um, I also would just like to echo Dr. McIntyre and thank our mentors. Um, I'm, usually we have like mentors and program instructors like raise their hand. Um, I think there's a reaction to do that. So if you know how to raise your hand or put a thumbs up, maybe. <laughs> If you want to put a thumbs up, how about that? Um, so that we can acknowledge all of our mentors and program faculty who teach and work alongside our students throughout the program. Um, your support is sincerely um, and deeply appreciated. Um, as you all know, I think one of the biggest strengths of our program um, is that we have meaningful and long lasting relationships with individuals who are um, educators and scholars uh, working both at ASU, but also um, across the valley 
um, and sometimes in, as well as in uh, other states. And so um, we appreciate uh, the support that you provide and, and the mentorship and uh, the learning that you, or the, the way that you help to expand the learning of our students in our program. So thank you very much uh, for that. And most importantly, I wanna say uh, congratulations and thank you to our students. Um, I'm sure it cannot go um, overstated, I think how unique this semester um, has been. Um, and you all um, continue to um, approach the project um, and your uh, capstone experience with um, enthusiasm, uh, with a level of dedication, um, a level of um, uh, flexibility and creativity uh, that I think um, I was just excited to see and gave me also energy as I entered um, and worked with you all over the last seven and a half weeks. Um, and so I know very few things feel like um, it's, it's normal as far as celebrating things in this particular context, but we do hope that you will find time to honor this moment in some way uh, to reflect back on all of the hard work that you've accomplished over your time in the program um, and that you are able to enjoy at least a moment of reprieve with family and friends and colleagues um, because what you have accomplished um, not only today and throughout the semester but over the program um, is definitely worth uh, celebrating. Um, and it's been our pleasure um, to be on this journey alongside of you. Um, so there's just two more things before we wrap up. So first one is kind of a, an announcement of sorts, which is at the very end, we'll ask all mentors, uh, program faculty and students to stay on uh, the call so that we can take um, a photo. Um, we may have to take multiple photos. I actually don't know how this works, taking photos in Zoom, but Jody will be here to assist us with that. Um, and also every uh, semester during the capstone experience, we um, have an opportunity to recognize a student, uh, one of your colleagues and um, peers um, who is um, nominated um, by uh, program faculty um, as a recognition for their um, achievement and contributions, um, both inside and outside of the classroom to the higher post-secondary education program. And so this year we'll have an opportunity to do the same. And what I'm going to do is just share very briefly um, what um, one nominator said about this particular student um, before I announce who the student is. And, and again, we um, and Lindsay, Dr. Dipple, who is on the call, normally does this part and does it much more eloquently than I do as I fumble <laughs> through this process. But it's really an opportunity for us to uh, recognize a, a peer who um, who has made uh, significant contributions, who has also impressed upon faculty with their dedication, not simply in this course, but throughout the program, um, and is therefore worthy of the, the nomination. We usually will hand you a piece of paper um, or a certificate of, um, of an award um, framed. Um, we will have to connect after this in order to pass that along to you. Um, but one nominator said about uh, this student, that this student is extremely engaged um, they also demonstrate a high level of intellectual uh, curiosity, um, and they also not only work well with students, but um, embrace uh, collaboration, um, and that this student in particular deserves recognition for their outstanding contributions that they made to the learning um, environment within and across classrooms. And so without further ado, that student is Dakota Weber. So let's give Dakota a round of applause. And also, Dakota, congratulations. I know you didn't know this was happening. Um, you and I can connect after to make sure that you get your certificate and award. But again, congratulations um, and for uh, a, an award that's well deserved. Okay. You. Yes, you're welcome. You're welcome. All right. So we're going to stop there. Again, thank you for everyone who um, came and visited with us. We'll ask for the students and program faculty um, and mentors to stay on so that we can get one picture. Um, and we will share that out with everyone as well.